Are you getting started connecting to the Notion API? This video can serve you as a starting point for querying your content from Notion. I created my website with Quick, Bun and Notion. In this stack, Notion serves as a basic CMS. The main benefits I see in Notion are, it has a free plan, it is a SaaS solution, so it's easy to onboard new team members, and last but not least, it's really fun to use. It's very simple and I'm sure that there are many use cases for using Notion as a data source. For the purpose of this video, I created a Kanban board. We have two columns. One is title and the second is status. Status can be any of to do, in progress or done. In Notion, we can also have a look at the board view. There we see that this is actually a Kanban board. So before we dive into details, let's clarify what data structures we have in Notion. In Notion, the main three data structures are databases, pages and blocks. Databases are simply collections of pages. The database defines a property schema for all its containing pages. In our example, those properties are the status property and the title property. Pages within a database can be filtered and sorted. You can also create custom views of databases in Notion, but those are not available via the API right now. Pages are objects with properties. Pages can also have some meta attributes, like the last change date, a cover and an icon. Pages can be nested and they can be within a database. And a database can be part of a page as well. The page's content is just a list of content blocks. There are various types of blocks, like paragraphs, images and links to other pages. Blocks can be part of a page or of another block. With this in mind, let's connect to the Notion API. To connect to Notion, you first need to have an API key. In Notion, we have a concept called integrations, also known as connections. To create our own connection with our own API key, we go to Settings and Members, Connections, and then Develop or Manage Integrations. Here you can customize your connection with a name and an image. You can also manage the capabilities of your connection. For our examples, the defaults are sufficient. Let's now quickly set up a project and create a .env file. We can now copy the connection secret and place it in the .env file. Now it's time to add our new connection to the pages we want to access via the API. The connection is passed down through the page and database hierarchy, so we normally would do this only for one or a few top-level pages. To do this, we hit the three dots on the top right of the page and then we select Add Connection and there our new connection should be listed. Now we are ready to go. Let's start querying the API. You can either directly use the HTTP API or you can use the Notion client, which in turn will use the HTTP API in the background. To get started, let's try to fetch some information about a page. Make sure you have a page at hand with the new connection attached. First, we need the page ID. This can be found in the URL of the page. It's a UUID without dashes. First, let's simply use fetch to create an HTTP request to the Notion API. The code could look similar to this. This is a simple request and we use the get method, which is default in fetch. Our base URL is https api.notion.com slash v1. Then we want to access the page resource. And here we want the page details of a specific page, so we append the ID. Then we need two headers, the authorization and the version. In the authorization header, we use the secret from the connection. If we are using bun, the .env file should be read and we should have direct access to this environment variable. In note, you can use the .env package 
to process the .env file. The Notion API is a JSON API, so we pass the body as JSON. And now we should have our page object at hand. Another way to achieve this is using the Notion client. For this we can install the at notionhq slash client package. Then we import the client from this package and create a new instance with our secret. We can call the pages.retrieve function to get our page. We pass in the page ID and the rest is done by the library. So we can either call the REST API via fetch or with the Notion client abstraction. Which of those is the better option? The clear advantage of isomorphic fetch is that you don't include any new libraries into your project. That said, the package Notion HQ client only depends on node fetch, which is very popular. However, there is some value in using the Notion client. The things I find quite helpful are the typings for requests and responses and the helper functions to paginate the Notion API. Because of this, in the rest of this video we will use the Notion client. So let's have a look at some API endpoints. Covering the whole API would be out of scope of this video. We will fetch some pages and blocks. For the rest of the API, you can have a look at the Notion documentation. We already saw how to fetch a page from the Notion API. Let's now have a closer look at the response. To get a good understanding of what the response can contain, let's have a look at the typings from Notion client. The response is of type page object response. Here we can see the parent of the page, the properties that we assign to our page, an icon and a cover, and some meta information about this page. For example, when it was created, by which user, and so on. But what's missing from this page? You're right, the content. If we want to get the pages shite blocks, we will have to send a separate request. For this we can call the blocks.children.list method on the client. Here the block ID is our page ID. This API is paginated. This is also reflected in the response type. We have the next cursor and the has more properties. Later on we will see how to efficiently process those paginated APIs in Notion. The results within is an array of our blocks. As mentioned before, we have many block types. For example, we have a paragraph which has some content and some meta properties as well. Now let's have a look at the database APIs. We can list pages within the database with the databases.query method. It requires the database ID and it's also a paginated API. We can also filter those pages within the database. In this example, we query only those pages which were changed within this week. Here's another refined filter where we query the pages which were changed within this week and have the status in progress or done. With AND and OR we have a very mighty filtering mechanism for this API. Of course we can also sort the entries which are returned by the query. We can also sort by multiple properties or attributes. As we can see in the typings of this response, this API is also paginated. So how can we iterate through paginated APIs? In the Notion API there are two helper functions which can help us with this. The collect paginated API helper will return all the results within an array. But if you want to save memory, you can also use the iterate paginated API helper. It is an async generator which allows you to visit each single item. This makes paginating the APIs very easy. So what else should we know about the Notion API? Another important aspect of the Notion API is the rate limiting. Rate limiting is happening per integration. At the time of recording, the rate is limited to 3 requests per second in average. 
but short bursts of multiple requests are allowed. In the docs of the Notion API is stated that this is subject to change in the future. It might also happen that the rate limiting will be dependent on your Notion plan. This is important to keep in mind and it also limits the use cases for the Notion API. We only scratched the surface of the Notion API in this video. You can also create, update and delete pages, blocks and even whole databases via the Notion API. We also did not touch the user and comment entities, which can be useful in some cases. As we saw, the Notion API is well equipped to serve as a content data source. Maybe you already have some ideas sparking up what you can build with this API. I wish you happy coding, never stop learning and see you in the next video.